So join the queue, grab a tray, and get yourself some cutlery. This is dinner, ladies, as you've never seen them before. <laughs> no, you could do it wrong. You could do it right. I'm not bothered. <laughs> Despite being focused on the rather humdrum world of a factory canteen, the dinner ladies' scripts were laden with jokes. It's really tight, it's really fast, the characters are very distinct. Tonally, it knows exactly... Oh, sorry. I have two auditions. We saw more than... Must! Don't look back on life like a timid <laughs> trip. <laughs> Athena, that girl, she's gone back to Sasha. Sasha to Stel. When Vic was planning what role... However, I think Vic felt what an impact it would make if she suddenly burst into a scene, created mayhem and chaos, but just... Where's Bren? No, you leave her alone, don't you? Put a spoke in the oar, she's on a promise. I know. I've said it wrong a bloody day. <laughs> as fertile as all get out till Kate Winslet started horsing around with a medicine ball. Had a, he had a scrotum like a You're going to say boxing glove. I know it. Go from little Lenny to Camper. Little Lenny to Camper. And his scrotum. <laughs> started horsing around with a medicine ball. <laughs> Two years ago. Shut us down two minutes, did you? Mm, we stayed in the British Run Hotel, we drank in the British Run Bar, and we, we ate at Max, uh, M McDonald's. Sorry about that. <laughs> it was one of those things with Victoria that I said to her, I can't get the gist of this. We stopped in a British Run Hotel, we drank in a British Run Bar, and we ate at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. Sorry about that. I really got it going now, thank you. You can say Kentucky Fried Chicken if you like. I can make a right mess of Kentucky Fried Chicken. You're done. In fact, I wrote you a letter. I said, darling, darling. A nice bit of flat bread, that's enjoyed it. Okay. 
Whoa, I tell you what's a good buy in my belly. Oh, what? Bin bags. <laughs> what it, what it, what it, what it, what it, what it. <laughs> Next time, we continue the story of dinner ladies. Morning. So join the queue, grab a tray, and get yourself a knife and fork. This is the dinner ladies as you've never seen them before. Very good, the halitosis. That's okay. <laughs> Dinner Ladies was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Now, normally, the BBC would employ a stand-up comedian to get the audience warmed up before they started filming. But this being a Victoria Woods sitcom, she decided she'd do it herself. You'll not really understand it because you've not seen it on the television, do you know what I mean? But what, because this is the third episode, and what it is, I, I am Bren, I am one of the five dinner ladies, Bren, who work in this canteen in this factory, which is just set, just outside Manchester. When an audience comes along to see a programme they've never seen before, it's a very hard task because they don't know what it's about. <laughs> this is Maxine Peake, who's not done any acting at all, have you? Not even this afternoon you didn't do any <laughs> Been to Rada, though, haven't you? Didn't get in. She'll look through the window and kill <laughs> Anyway, so you are Twinkle and you're Anita, and we'll see you later. You later, girls. We're out of the house. <laughs> we said that's it. Saturday night. We're coming out. <laughs> you know what this is about before we do it. Well, what it's about is see Jean. She's thinking about her wedding night. You think about the food for your wedding, aren't you? That's what not she's thinking mine. About. Not no, mine. no, not your wedding. Your daughter's wedding. <coughs> daughter's wedding. Lisa. So it's when it's just so you're not going, uh, when it starts, you know what I mean? <laughs> if you've only seen the generation game, you're not going to catch up with this. <laughs> used to be in Crossroads, didn't you? I'm not yeah. saying. <laughs> what were you called? Ginger what? Parsons. I was, Ginger in, Parsons. It, I was in it three weeks. Yeah. When was that? 1950, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> we paid £5.3 and £11, wasn't it? Uh, £25.16 and £8. Too much, too much. They were robbed. <laughs> Can you sponsor me over the Kalahari Desert? I'll probably peg out en route, but what does it matter? I've had my life. Sign here. I wish I could. Oh, my God. <laughs> To go out with this, so well, it was quite nice. He was in, an international figure skater. She was very nice, it was a bit boring in bed, you know. Every night it was the same thing the compulsory is followed by the short program. <laughs> Amazingly, Victoria Wood wrote every episode of Dinner Ladies by hand and on her own. With no writing partner and no interference from the BBC. You can get the tune. All those characters are so vivid. You know, if you have only got one line, you know it's going to be a cracking. I'll tell you what, you tell me what the lines are and I'll copy what you said. <laughs> oh, no. Just what? Uh, now look, just give it to me. Just give it to me. When you come back. When you come back. I'll I'm telling you, just in case you can't hear it the next time, you'll know what they said. Just give it to me when you come back. I'll, I'll sort it out. I'll sort it. I'll sort it. Who put that out in? I never wrote <laughs> Though, as I'm paid by the word, it would have been a good idea to pop it in. <laughs> I'll sort it out, possibly, can I? Should I? I think I possibly should. <laughs> Thank you. 20 quid, eh? Thank you. Okay, so we'll just run into this room. Come on, girls, let's move it. Yes, we'll just bring... So how did our dinner ladies cast feel about all those script rewrites and Victoria's unshakable attention to detail? Look how many changes... As well as being strict about the script, Victoria, along with director Jeff Posner, had a very clear idea how the series should be filmed. I went to the BBC and said, so if we did two recordings of it, then we could get two goes at it. And actually what happened was that Vic would come round on Saturday morning, we'd sit down... Bye! Bye! You know, we were pondering about me maybe get... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it in English tonight, eh? <laughs> Recording something twice was indeed virtually unheard of. But the dinner ladies' team were adamant that they should film the show once on a Friday and then again on a Saturday with two different audiences. 
It wasn't a cheap piece to make. Yeah. It's uh, with, you know, two different audiences. But at the same time, it was absolutely worth it because... The piece... Second stab at it. You did it one night and then you're going, ah, right, yeah, I know if I hit that line or, you know, it better than that or come in there, but, you know. Twink? Oh. Are you all right? No, I've got a bad gut with them mince pies. Well, they've gone off. How many did you have? Four. Twink? Well, seven. <laughs> Well, eight if you count jeans. You look pretty bad yourself, though. Yeah, I was going to ask you, have you got anything? What? That I can take to keep me awake. I can't think straight. Poor Tony's cocked out. Cocked out. <laughs> <laughs> Canteen was no different. It was Tony, played by Andrew Dunn, who had the unenviable task of keeping the kitchen running smoothly. It was lovely to see that tender sort of love story. Bren and Tony finally got it together just before Christmas in 1999. Have you written me a note? What is it? Nothing. What is it? Nothing. Duncan and Victoria first met in 1981, when he was cast in one of her plays. And, uh, <laughs> I talked to her about it, and she was not happy, believe me. It was the only row we ever had, really. And, uh... And getting it right first time wasn't as easy as it sounds, especially given Stan's new extended monologues. Human resources. You've got none. Shall I tell you something? Don't get your dander up, Stan. Get my dander up, get it up. I wouldn't even give it a nudge with a wet flannel. <laughs> I've seen some pitiful sights in this canteen. Girls trying to stack five chairs on a four-chair table. <laughs> Don't get your dander up, Stan. <laughs> it's all riding on you now, Duncan. Stan may have fumbled over his lines once or twice, but when it came to the ladies, he was a bit of a smooth operator. I can't remember. I, all these wigs are in their own bloody order. <laughs> I never thought of him as, you know, someone who would conquer any... Time we continue the story of dinner ladies, as we explore why you should never work with children, animals or food. I'm a whip of raw bacon and sex the edge of it. <laughs> And we'll meet some canteen regulars who are never satisfied with their customer service. Tonight, we continue the story of Dinner Ladies, Victoria Wood's very first sitcom. <laughs> a queue, grab a tray, and get yourself a napkin. This is the Dinner Ladies as you've never seen them before. I left the army in 1968, and I went to Thursk via... improvising, I see. Yeah. <laughs> anybody like a chip, just to test? <laughs> miss, but try again. Really Given the dinner ladies were set in a canteen, it meant that the filming of the show would almost always involve a bit of food preparation, which was more difficult than it actually sounds. You can't be dealing with somebody else's bread. Is there all this out, then? Well, that's not my bread. <laughs> Me coming onto the set and buttering bread. <laughs> I mean, I'll put it in here. <laughs> you don't get this with Catherine Cooks and you? <laughs> Nobody will know it's in there, ready buttered. Well, there you are. You see. <laughs> it's probably from Asda. Do you do that, ready buttered bread? <laughs> <laughs> Can't be an actress. I don't work with Turks normally. <laughs> have them now, don't they? Do they? Yeah, it went paper. Did you not read it? They get the sperm up. Oh, please, how can I talk with this girl? <laughs> <laughs> She's only worked in a sweet shop, can't handle Tom. I was asked not to whisk so loudly once. <laughs> 
a behind the scenes glimpse into the making of a classic comedy, which contained all the right ingredients. <laughs> Cold, by the way. <laughs> 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 Can I have twelve? <laughs> I learned a lot from working with Vic. You wanted to get it as as right as you could, and I think I learned a lot from working with Vic. You wanted to get it as, as right as you could, and I think... Bloody hell, you try and bring a bit, bit of those <laughs> Next in the queue is factory worker Bob, who started off his dinner lady's life as a one-line wonder. You all right, then, Brendan? Yeah. OK, so stand you by then. <laughs> There's no gravy. There was some gravy. Anita. Anita. <laughs> At 23 years of age, I probably worked with some of the best comedians. This Plot device. Here we are. And gave Victoria the chance to bring some small screen legends to the canteen. Because they all wanted to do the show. And she absolutely loved working with Eric Sykes, Dora Bryan, Thora Heard. You know, that combination of people with people that she'd seen when she was growing up. So, at 23 years of age, I probably worked with some of the best comedians this Tell me to watch it. I did watch it. That's why I'm here now. Working overtime. <laughs> Cup of tea, Dad. These modern fabrics are marvellous. Lovely bright colours. Yeah, look at the elastic. You can be bare arsed in seconds. <laughs> <laughs> if Jean was having a full sex life. <laughs> where we are. This is Dolly's mum, Enid. Oh, how do you do? They tried to put me in the track soon once. I'll say that again because that right. wasn't very clear. Right. Thank you. <laughs> get me. I'll never get this part, you know, if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Can you finish your business a bit longer, Thora? Yeah. You might be able to do it. I was a desert rat. When you've shaved in sand and had to boil water in a paper bag, one doesn't get excited about golf balls. <laughs> Got it, don't know, don't you? Or you want it all? all. Oh, You're getting your money's worth tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. She just doesn't take any notice of me. That's why Percy's gone off the boil. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 they used to reckon that stopped you getting pregnant. Sorry? Vinegar. How did that work? I mean, how did you... Well, I, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Are you following this? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's some salad sandwiches and a few jokes thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to have the first baby of the Minellium, you just said Minellium. I didn't, I said Minellium. I just <laughs> said it again. <laughs> Kirby Grips, please. Thanks, Brain. <laughs> she wasn't exactly a sex object before, but that's put the. <laughs> <laughs> You said stop, I so I sort of half stopped. Oh, because oh. it was one of the audience who decided. <laughs> 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 <laughs>